Hi. Hi guys, Mike here again. We're looking at gifts and graces. This is part three, the promise practice. And it's interesting with the day of Pentecost, you know, there's still people in the world today who believe that was just a, a one day, um, one outpouring for that time. Um, but that's never sat comfortably with me and with most um, Bible interpreters and scholars. And so, you know, the disciples were not guardians of something that was just poured out on the day of Pentecost a couple of thousand years ago, but they were ambassadors of Christ and not just ambassadors of Christ, but they were equipped with the God given capabilities required. They had a divine work to do and they had a divine power to do it. And this is true of Christians today. We still have a divine work to do and we have divine power to do it. That's why we need the baptism of the Spirit. The church's mission is more than just developing a philosophy or calling people to uh, morality. Instead, it, the, the church's mission is to deliver people from the bondage of Satan. And, you know, I, I grew up and when I became a Christian, people said, oh, he's gone all religious, you know, he's not going to do this and do that. And, and I didn't. But it, what that's not what I got saved for. Um, got saved to be set free and to set others free. Um, so we set people free from the bondage of Satan. It's to bind the enemy and it's to loose the bound in the name of Jesus. And you can see that in Matthew 16, 19. Um, there will still be people who philosophize and um, moralize about the church, but you do that with your human capabilities. But if you really want to see people delivered from the bondage of sin and bring them to repentance and faith, that requires an anointing of the Holy Spirit. The way I was taught was you need the, um, the anointing is the unction and you need the unction to function. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 3 verses 4 to 6. Such confidence we have through Christ before God, not that we're competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Let me give you an, an Old Testament example of, of um, the promise practice, and it's a guy called Bezalel. And in Exodus uh, 35, 29 to 35, God says of him, he says, I filled him with the spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver and bronze and cutting stones for setting and carving wood for work in every craft. And he designed all the gear around the tabernacle. He designed uh, all the beautiful artwork and he worked with gold and he worked with all the, the stuff there because God had filled him with his spirit and enabled him to do that work. Um, Bezalel, he had a natural talent of craftsmanship, but then he had the Holy Spirit anoint him, and that gave him a, a, a spiritual gift of knowledge or of intelligence which nobody else could design. It directed him and his natural talents um, and how they were to be used. So because of that, he was able to produce beautiful objects for Israel's worship. And, you know, God accepts all human talent dedicated to his service, but he enhances and empowers those talents through the Holy Spirit. I'll touch on another guy from the New Testament Go next. Hey, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Hope is Alive channel and click here or here to watch more videos. Anytime you like.